Within the Microsoft.NET framework, there is a component known as the base class library. And this is essentially a library of classes, interfaces, and value types that you can use to provide common functionality in all of your .NET applications. The base class library is divided into namespaces to make locating that functionality easier. We've seen examples of using some of that functionality from the using directives that exist at the top of our program.cs file. We bring in namespaces such as system and system.collections.generic, system.link, system.text, and system.threading.task. And within these namespaces exist classes that perform certain functionality that are related to the namespaces. As an example, let's take a look at what exists in the system.text namespace for functionality or for classes. Now, in order to do that, one of the simplest ways is to bring up our object browser window. If we click on the View menu, we can see that there's a window called Object Browser. The shortcut key combination is Control plus W and J. And this brings up another tab window known as the Object Browser window. By default, the Object Browser looks for components within the current solution. So we can change that object browsing scope by selecting all components or focusing on a specific version of the .NET framework. Note that as the .NET framework versions change, you'll have multiple namespace additions and or class changes within that. So if we simply select all components just to ensure that we gain access to everything that is available within that base class library, we can start to scroll down through all of these namespaces to find what we're looking for. But as you can see, there are a lot of namespaces available, and these are all available for different aspects or different programming types, the different projects that we can create within Visual Studio. Instead, we said we wanted to see what was in system.txt, so let's go ahead and use the search functionality by typing in system.txt in our search box and clicking the search button. Visual Studio will then filter our results so that we're only looking at system.txt. And don't be too concerned about all of these different ones that are available here. As you can see, as I click on them, you can tell it will tell you that system.txt is a member of, in this case, system.runtime. This one is a member of system, the MS Core Lib. So again, this talks about how the namespaces are used to create this hierarchical organization of our classes. Let's just focus on the system.txt one that's a part of the system namespace. And you can see in here, we have different classes available. There's URIs classes. There's a URI format, a URI kind class. What if we were looking at the one that's a part of the MS Core Lib or the Microsoft Core Library? Here we have other classes such as decoder and encoder. So here we're working on changing the encoding of a, a set of, a, or basically a byte array that exists in memory. And there's also a string builder that's in here. Notice that as we click on each one of these classes, it pops up into the right-hand pane a list of methods and properties that are available for that class. And it also gives us an explanation as to what it is. So it tells us this is a public sealed class builder, member of system.txt. And what does this namespace do? Well, it represents a mute, sorry, a class, actually, in this, in this instance. It represents a mutable string of characters, and the class cannot be inherited. And this is the reason that the sealed class modifier is on here. So again, this is a quick way of taking a look at the different namespaces and classes that are available within the .NET framework in that base class library to gain an idea of what the class is used for, which namespace you will have to import in order to use that class functionality, and then you can take a look at all of the methods that exist in that class to see what the method does and any of the values you might have to put into it. So a great way of getting familiar with that base class library and it's something that you should use on a regular basis. Anytime you think that you have to create functionality in your application, do a search in that base class library. Chances are the functionality already exists and you can reuse it in your own application without having to rewrite the code.